Hello and welcome, my name is Meeplus, she, they, and this is Literally Graphic. And for today's tag video, I wanted to do a bit of a creator profile video for someone who I talked about a number of times pre-channel reset, but not recently. And with it being Indigenous History Month here in the so-called Canada, now felt like the time to revisit David Alexander Robertson. He, him, a prolific swampy Cree writer who among things I've undoubtedly missed, contributed to the anthologies This Place, 150 Years, and Moonshot, Volume 3, Review Links and Cards, and has written two picture books, eight comics for children, two YA comics, and two YA graphic novels, one comic for adults, a novel for adults, a YA urban fantasy trilogy, the start of a middle grade saga, a memoir with a number of other titles on the way, exploring topics that have been swept aside by settlers for too long. I find Robertson's work to be honest, enlightening, and impossible to put down. But to dig a bit deeper, as it were, let's start with the picture books. Robertson finished On the Trap Line very recently, and I haven't actually been able to get my hands on it yet, but I've read other books illustrated by Julie Flett, and they are all beautiful, so I know it will be a delight. The official description is as follows, quote, a boy and Mushum, his grandpa, take a trip together to visit a place of great meaning to Mushum. A trap line is where people hunt and live off the land, and it was where Mushum grew up. As they embark on their northern journey, the child repeatedly asks his grandfather, is this your trap line? Along the way, the boy finds himself imagining what life was like two generations ago, a life that appears to be both different from and similar to his life now. This is a heartfelt story about memory, imagination, and intergenerational connection that perfectly captures the experience of a young child's wonder as he is introduced to places and stories that hold meaning for his family." Unquote. Winner of the Governor General's Literary Award and Shining Willow Award, When We Were Alone, also with Julie Flett, is the story of a girl and her grandmother. Quote, when a young girl helps tend to her grandmother's garden. She begins to notice things that make her curious. Why does her grandmother have long braided hair and beautifully colored clothing? Why does she speak another language and spend so much time with her family? As she asks her grandmother these things, she is told about life in a residential school a long time ago, where all these things were taken away. When We Were Alone is a story about a difficult time in history and ultimately one of empowerment and strength. Moving up to children's comics, Robertson did a series entitled Tales from the Big Spirit with a variety of artists. Each installment highlighted a different figure in indigenous history, including figures such as Mr. Himasqua, John Ramsey, Nancy April, Pauline Johnson, Thanadelther, Tommy Prince, and Gabriel Dumont. Moving through time, unlike what was heavily suggested to me in my schooling, indigenous people never stopped existing. Geared towards younger people, I still learned a lot in these extremely fast reads. Robertson's middle grade novel series, The Misawa Saga, was kicked off just last year with The Barren Grounds, which is, according to Goodreads, quote, Narnia meets traditional indigenous stories of the sky and constellations in an epic middle grade fantasy series from award-winning author David Robertson, end quote. Moving into his YA comics, Sugar Falls, a residential school story, quote, a school assignment to interview a residential school survivor leads Daniel to Betsy, his friend's grandmother, who tells him her story. Abandoned as a young child, Betsy was soon adopted into a loving family. A few years later, at the age of eight, everything changed. Betsy was taken away to residential school. There she was forced to endure abuse and indignity. But Betsy recalled the words her father spoke to her at Sugar Falls. Words that gave her the resilience, strength, and determination to survive. End quote. Certainly a part of so-called Canada's history that my fellow settlers need to face, to say the least. Similar Betsy, the Helen Betty Osborne story, is one of too many stories of missing and murdered Indigenous women, and is something my non-Indigenous peers really need to sit with. Quote, Helen Betty Osborne, known as Betty to her closest friends and family, dreamed of becoming a teacher. She left her home to attend residential school and high school in a small town in Manitoba. On November 13, 1971, Betty was abducted and brutally murdered by four young men. 
Initially met with silence and indifference, her tragic murder resonates loudly today. Betty represents one of almost 1,200 Indigenous women in Canada who have been murdered or gone missing. This book is a true account. Content may be disturbing to some readers. End quote. Much like Tales from Big Spirit, YA graphic novel Seven Generations, a plain Cree saga combines past and present, but also looking firmly at the future. Traveling back in time, Edwin learns about past generations of his family, starting with Stone in the early 19th century and moving through the smallpox epidemic of 1870 and his own father's experience in residential school. Together with his father, James, Edwin is able to begin a new journey. Another recent addition to Robertson's collected works, I was able to get my hands on the next YA title, Alibi Digitally. The breakdown is the first volume in his new The Reckoner Tr Rises trilogy. Quote, after the events of Wounded Sky, Cole and Eva arrive in Winnipeg, the headquarters of Miko Laboratories, they are intent on destroying the company once and for all, but their plans are thwarted when a new threat surfaces. When Cole becomes mired in terrifying visions, Eve must harness her newly discovered powers to investigate Miko without him. Are Cole's visions just troubled dreams, or are they leading him to a horrible truth? End quote. A continuation of Robertson's YA speculative novel trilogy of the same name. Taking up the pen to tell his own story, Robertson's memoir, Blackwater, Family Legacy, and Blood at Memory just came out last year. The son of a Cree father and a non-Indigenous mother, David A. Robertson, was raised with virtually no knowledge or understanding of his family's Indigenous roots. His father, Don, spent his early childhood on a trap line in the bush northeast of Norway House, Manitoba, where his first teacher was the land. When his family was moved permanently to a nearby reserve, Don was not permitted to speak Cree at school unless in secret with his friends and lost the knowledge he had been gifted while living on his trap line. His mother, Beverly, grew up in a small Manitoba town with not a single indigenous family in it. Then Don arrived, the new United Church minister, and they fall in love. Structured around a father-son journey to the northern trap line where Robinson and his father will reclaim their connection to the land, Blackwater is the story of another journey, a young man seeking to understand his father's story, to come to terms with his lifelong experience with anxiety, and to finally piece together his own blood memory, the parts of his identity that are woven into the fabric of his DNA. Will I See You, illustrated by GMB Chomachuk, is the most unique looking graphic novel by David Alexander Robertson. Quote, May, a young teenage girl, traverses the city streets finding keepsakes in different places along her journey. When May and her kukum make these keepsakes into a necklace, it opens a world of danger and fantasy. While May fights against a terrible reality, she learns that there is strength in the spirits of those who have passed. But will that strength be able to save her? A story of tragedy and beauty, Will I See You, illuminates the issue of missing and murdered Indigenous women. And to conclude Robertson's novel, The Evolution of Alice, quote, the haunting emotionally resonant story delivers us into the world of Alice, a single mother raising her three young daughters on the res where she grew up. Alice has never had an easy life, but has managed to get by with the support of her best friend Gideon and her family. When an unthinkable loss occurs, Alice is forced into a different path, one that will challenge her belief in herself and the world she thought she knew. The evolution of Alice is the kaleidoscopic story of one woman's place within the web of community. People with unforgettable characters and told from multiple points of view. This is a novel where the spirits are alive, forgiveness is possible, and love is the only thing that matters." End quote. I hope this has given a few of you some ideas of what to add to your TBRs. Bye y'all, keep reading, and resist white supremacy. And as always, Literally Graphic is created on land that should be given back to the traditional land holders, which in this case is, to my knowledge, the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation, Anishinaabe people, the Haudenosaunee Confederacy, and the Huron-Wendat Nation.